Okay, just before we get to Proverbs 31 and finish up the book, let me read you Ephesians 5.23 before we start. It says, For the husband is the head of the wife. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to read about the virtuous woman and we're going to read. And if you got a problem, you take it up with God. This is the words of King Lemuel, verse 1, that his mother taught him, a very wise woman. Gives advice to a king and he adhered to it. And which we can learn much. Now who can find a virtuous woman? She's pure, rare, wise. 2 Samuel 20 verse 16. Women in the Bible you can find that are virtuous would be Hannah, would be Ruth, would be uh, Abigail. Mary would be a virtuous woman. For her price is far above rubies. Okay, she's she can't be bought. Diamonds are not her friend. She's again, she's rare. And you grab a hold of a woman like this, you stay cold to her. Because we'll find out that God is with her. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Chapter 6, verses 26 to 32. He doesn't need to worry about her conduct while he's away. Potiphar's wife, that guy needed to worry because when he's gone, she's out after every man she can get. The strange woman we read about in Proverbs, you know, he's gone away with a bag of money. And that's a husband that needs to worry about his wife. Adultery and fornication and finances. So that he ha that he shall have no need of spoil. Again, diamonds, are not, she's not interested in goods. To her, if he brings home goods and, and presents, it, it's a joy, but it's not required. It's his love for her that he's showing that she gets a bounty. What do we give Christ? And look at what all Christ has given us. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's faithful. And we have seen in 31 chapters of Proverbs, the contentious woman, that he doesn't want to be home. So a virtuous woman needs to know the difference between good and evil. If she doesn't know the difference, she's not being faithful to her husband. She seeketh wool, flax. So she goes out and buys material, working willingly, willingly, not because I have to, with her hands. Her hands are busy. Upon making with wool and facts, not TV controls. Her hands are for use for work. And we'll get into that in a minute about work and what the Bible says. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. And there's your groceries. She's the one that goes out and gets the groceries for the house. There are certain foods that she needs to go out, leave the house, and buy. There are things that she needs to go out, like wool and flax, to, to get. She may not have sheep around the house. She may not have sugar in the house. She's got to go buy it, so it means she's got to be... Bountiful and plentiful and faithful with money. She can't overspend. She rises also while it is yet night. I remember my old mom and my grandma would be up before we all got up. And breakfast was provided and ready. 
If she's a if she's a woman that is uh, that has a child, she's even up earlier, attending to the babies. A woman that is virtuous in the Bible gets very little sleep, and the very little she, sleep she gets, she's doing it working for her household. It's right there, black and white. And giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maids. Job 29, verses 15 and 16, and Nehemiah 8, 10. She giveth meat for her family to eat, and she pays the, the servants. Again, she's a woman of the kitchen. And she's a woman of the money. She's got to make sure the maidens get what, what they have coming to them. She's got to make sure everybody in that household is fed. So she's got to be able to plan and budget and however you do, I don't know if it's called budget for food, but she's got to be able to lay out for, for that week what she's going to need to provide the food. You can't run short. You can't come Friday when you got one more day of the week. Oh, I, I didn't plan enough. I didn't have enough. Because it's a Saturday for the Jewish woman, you're not to go out and work. On Friday, she's got to do double. So she doesn't have to work on Saturday. Friday, she's got to prepare a meal for Saturday that doesn't need to be cooked. And you can't be having the maidens, you know, at the well. Oh, I work for Mrs. Such and Such, and, and, you know, that woman owes me two weeks back pay. Or she's cruel. Now we move to Acts 5, verses 1 through 6, verse 16. She considers the field and buys it. She's got to have knowledge and wisdom and understanding to... Look at property. She is a property expert. She knows enough about land and of its value, and it says she buys it. Isn't that interesting? In the Bible, you got to have a woman that is smart enough to know what to do with money and what to do to gain more back. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. Now, a vineyard, she's going to grow with this property she's bought. Look at the increase she's going to get from the money that her husband's given her. Look at the work she's done. She's cooking. She's paying the, the servants. She's shopping. She's buying wool. She's buying flax. She's making clothes. Now she's planting a vineyard. With that vineyard, she's going to be able. <coughs> pardon me. She's going to. She's going to be able to sell grapes. She's going to be able to sell raisins. And she's also going to be able to sell wine. She has taken one piece of property and turned it into a three-fold industry. There is nothing wrong with a woman that works. But let me classify myself for what I read in Ephesians. And Peter says that the, the women be subjections to their husbands. This woman is not working under any man but her husband. It is a violation of scripture to put your wife under another man. The money she's using, the goods she's using comes from her husband and her hands. And the Bible allows it. 
Now, the husband can step in and say, I don't want you to plant a vineyard. I want you to plant barley or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Then she would be in subjection to her husband to what he says and not what another man says. Do you realize that the Bible has a forbearance of two things for the women? She's not to commit adultery and she's not to be a subject to another man and she is not to be in subjection, I mean, she's not to be in authority over a man. She's not to be with another man sexually. She is not to be ruled over by another man, but her husband. And sexually would be her husband. And she's not to listen to another man, but her husband. And she's not to be a ruler over men. She's got enough going on in her, in her household. It may not be a vineyard. It may be sheep. It may be goats. Whatever it is. If she's got sheep, she's got to share them and know enough what to keep for her household and what to sell. And then to take the wool and make it into uh, yarn and, and make goods out of that verse 13 to sell them. We'll see in a minute. The virtuous woman of the Bible is a multitasker at, at home. And her husband trusts in her. To do all. You got girls are being brought up today who don't even know how to cook. And that's against the Bible standards. Because she's to give meat to her household. You got women growing up today that don't know how to sew. That's against Bible standards. We're going to see that in a minute too. She girdeth her loins with strength. She's no weakling. She's a fit woman. She's getting her daily exercise not by going to the spa, not going to the workout gym. She's getting it by doing her daily chores at home. And with the chores and the work that needs to be at home, she's keeping that figure. And strengthen her arms by holding, by grabbing, by picking up things. She don't need to get a job outside of the house. She's got enough going on right now at the home. But men have so abused their wives and so discredited them. The man is at fault. Listen, you got a woman like this, and there's nothing wrong with taking her out to eat, taking her out somewhere every once in a while. It won't be a sin. It's a sin on how you men treat these women. She, perce she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She makes sure she buys that which is good and which will last. She don't buy junk. Her candle goeth not out by night. She's got the house fully supplied. The candle goes out in, in the room. She knows where the other where the new candles are and gets it. There's never oh you have to wait till tomorrow. Remember in this day and age there was no Walmart's, there was no convenience stores, there was no 24-7. If you ran out in the middle of the night, you had to wait till the next day. The supplies in the house are kept and are monitored. She knows if something's been stolen. She knows if something's going bad soon, that she needs to use that. She lays her hands to the spindle, and this is all for the spinning wheel. Exactly what the tools are of it, I don't know. Her hands hold the distaff, again, the spinning wheel. Not only is she making clothes, she's making the yarn that makes the clothes. She's making the thread that make the clothes. She has purchased, I'm going to say a sheep or two, 
And with that sheep, she's going to make fabric in her house and cloth. She's going to buy fax, the flax. She's going to make it into thread. Because it's cheaper than going to the store and getting it on a spool yourself. And with the excess, again, she's going to get, she's going to make for her household, we'll see. And she's going to sell, we'll see. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She's not stingy. She's smart. She knows those who are poor indeed. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not selfish. She's a giving woman and she'll give to the poor and she'll give to the needy. She'll give to her home. She'll give to her husband. She'll give to the servant. She's a giver rather than a taker. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For her household are clothed with scarlet. It gets cold. All the family has the proper clothing to go out and do what needs to be done. And by the supplies that we read about, she knows where the mittens and the gloves are. She knows where the sandals are. And clothing, scarlet, that's a, that's a red dye. That, that's an expensive dye. It takes a lot of money to buy that. I mean, she's been making a good profit on the things she's been doing. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. She decorates her house to her liking. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. And there's no complaining about the man. Listen, man, you go out to work. She's the one that's home all day. Now, she wants them drapes. She wants them curtains. That's her house. And from what we read about her, what she's doing, she's made those things herself out of her own hands, out of her own money. It didn't cost you nothing. Matter of fact, <coughs> it's probably gained you money. Because she probably made not only tapestry for herself, but she's made for others to sell. You know, like in quilting parties, everybody gets together and they make a quilt for a woman about to get married. Everybody gets a vow. Now here is a quilt for a newlywed couple. Her clothing is silk and purple. The best, the finest. Now listen, if she can find at the the thrift store a silk or, or purple good clothing, it's not where it comes from. It's it's the bargain. It's the good price. It's rightly handling the money. But if you're going to go to a place where you're going to pay extraordinary amount of money for somewhere where you can get it cheaper, that's not smart. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sitteth among the elders of the land, he's somebody of authority. She is not. But the husband being known at Gates would be that his wife is giving him a, a thing to talk about. How well is he taken care of? Now, how well is he speaking of her? Because I've heard some men speak gross and rotten of their wives. That need not to be so. She maketh fine linen. And we've read about it. And sell with it. So what she's doing is she's going out, she's getting the resources, the raw material. She's returning the raw material into a byproduct that can be used. Now with the byproduct that can be used, she's making things for herself and her family. Making sure that their supplies, their needs, 
and their wants are taken care of. Now, after that, she's making surplus, and she's selling it to get more money back into the home, and she has no man over her but her husband. No one is ruling her but the man in the house. Now, she may take the fine land and sell it. Her husband may come, hey, hey, don't sell that. I've already got a buyer for those things. Don't sell. Now, there's the rule of authority. There's the boss of the house. And she has to listen to him. But that doesn't say she can't shut up. She may say, listen, okay, you got a buyer for these things, but dear, if I go down to the marketplace on such and such day, I could sell them for a dollar or more or whatever of what you're going to sell them for. And she may say, well, why don't you take half, I'll take half. See, it doesn't say where this woman doesn't have a mouth. She does. She's smart. Her husband should listen to her. He safely trusts in her. She may have more brains than he does. She's doing a lot more work and learn a lot more. And delivereth girdles unto the merchant. There is nothing wrong with a woman be selling things. We've got booths around here, with flea markets, all that. There's nothing wrong for a woman to say, hey, listen, I'm going to open up a booth and I'm going to sell things. And with the money I'll make, I'll pay for the table and all stuff. As long as there's not another man over her authority. And it's not illegal. And she's going to make money for the family, for the home. Deliver girdles to the merchant. That's people who come in and buy things particular. She makes linen. She sells it. Can a woman get a job outside the house? Yes and no. Well, how can it be yes and no? As long as it involves the house, the center point is the house, and no man is over her except for her husband, yes. Now, I understand. Listen, if you're going to pay for a table, they're going to set rules for that table, okay? They're going to tell you what you can do, what you can't do. what I, That is understandable. But no one should be over that woman and say, okay, you're coming in tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the morning to, to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And you're, no, 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 none of that. You know, come over here and take a dictation. No, 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 no. There's only one person a wife should take orders from and get a sexual attention from and, and care and loving from, and that is from her husband. Now, she don't have a husband. The Bible, the Bible says her father. It's either a father or a husband that's under this child, this daughter. Husband, if your wife want to do something like this, it, it's a lot better than send them out in the world. The dog you eat in the world. You know what? It'll give her self confidence. It'll give her. It'll give her the joy and the blessfulness of serving. She might even be able to meet people, gospel tracks, and talk to them about the Lord. But the main thing is the authority. Who will be in the authority? Let her work her hands. As long as she takes care of the house. As long as the meals are taken care of, as long as the supplies are in the house, I mean, if she's got extra, let her go and do her part that she feels obligated by her own heart. Not because you're going to make her do it. Let her want to do it. But one day she'll say, she'll come and say, you know, I've been selling these whatever is at the... I just don't feel like doing it no more. I, my heart's not in it. I know my fingers hurt. What? Is that how you feel, dear? That's how I feel. Okay, then. You don't have to do it no more. Maybe you'll find something better. Oh, okay. 
It's not, get down there and sell the old thing. Well, you know, no, it's not that at all. She might be just aiming at one particular thing to get extra money. And once she's got it, then, okay, I got it. I'm going to stop. See, it's not a forced obligation that a husband has to go and provide for his family. She's doing this because she loves her family. She wants to be productive. Listen, if, if a woman gets pregnant and she's coming on her seventh, eighth, ninth month, and then uh, the, you know the child is one month, two months, three, I don't expect to go out to a booth selling things. Expect to spend all that time taking care of herself. Before the pregnancy and the baby after the pregnancy. Strength and honor are in her clothing. You know, she could have a piece of clothing that's got stitches and, and patches all over the place. Well, that thing is comfortable and that thing is, is, is sturdy. She did a good job. Oh, I see. It's other people that look upon the outward appearance, and God looks on the heart. When God sees that woman taking care of her clothes of the entire family, hey, you may have to put a patch there. And somebody, oh, look at that. He's got patch. I mean, it's comfortable. And it was done by love. What about your case? And the Lord will look upon the heart of that young lady, that, that wife, and say, you know, she did that with love. That other one went out there and spent 40 bucks for something that, that far beyond how much it should be paid for. And she just did because so she wanted to, you know, go buy some other stuff. It's in the heart. And she shall rejoice in the time to come. She's all about her rejoicing and having joy. A joyful wife is a blessing. We've read about the contentious woman. The guy doesn't want to be home. This type of woman, he, he died to come home. She opens her mouth. So see, she's allowed to speak. With wisdom. She's smart. She's intelligent. And she may know. Listen. Pilate's wife knew more than Pilate, and Pilate didn't listen to her. Had Pilate listened to his wife, things would have been a whole lot different. Pilate's wife had wisdom and was used of God. And her tongue is the law of kindness. I, I have heard some of the tongue, some women out there. And it's a shame. It's a shame that parents have raised a girl to be like that. And there are certain words that come to mind that I can't say. But you, you look like a filthy and sound like a filthy tramp. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Now see, it's all about the household. I'm selling stuff at a booth, but now there are things that are lacking in the household. I gotta stop one day, two days. I gotta I gotta get back to the household. There's stuff that needs to be done there. Alright, things are taken care of, I can go back to the booth. See the obligation is to the house. Everything else is extra. The selling, the, the merchants and all that is something that, that is done when everything else is taken care of. And usually if she's a smart woman, as the Bible has said, and she's got maidens and, and, and servants, and like the Bible has said, she has time and she knows how to, to, to put the authority into others to do what needs to be done. And eateth not the bread of idleness. There's no soap operas, there's no video games, and there's no telephone time. And even when, when she's having that moment gab session at the well, the city well, the town well, that's because someone else is using the, the bucket to fill their things up and, you know, 
talking whatever women talk. There's a time, you know, to have your little gab session. Why are you waiting for somebody else to get the work done? You can talk to the other women. But there's no idleness. The house is production for both the husband and the wife. Listen, the interest that you put in your family, God will have you give an account for. You will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I ain't talking about no lost woman here. This is a saved woman who loves the Lord and loves the word. This woman is going to walk away with crowns. And it's going to be by the help of her husband. Her husband is going to walk away with crowns by the help of his wife. The children will walk away with crowns by the help of the mother and by the help of the father together. That's how it works. But if she's contentious, there's a breaking down. If he's a fool, there's a breaking down. If the children are bad and rotten, there's a breaking down. The Old Testament says if you got a child that won't listen to you, you're to take them out, you're to stone them, you're to get them out of that family unit. If a wife or a husband steps out in adultery, you're to take them out, you're to stone them, get them out of the family unit. Remove the cancer. This woman's no cancer. She's the right hand of her husband. The most strongest part of the body that takes the most use. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Happy. Says over the songs, a joyful woman, a joyful mother. Do your children see you happy? If you are happy, then you'll be called blessed. If you're not happy, you're, you're doing something wrong. Because the fruit of the Spirit is joy, love, peace. Her husband also calls her blessed and he praises her. Man, listen, if you put down your wife, you're going to... Oh boy, I'll tell you, you're in trouble. Imagine God throwing Jesus Christ throwing Proverbs 31 28 at you. Battle actually. And her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. I'm a King James Bible man. No, I'm not saying you don't get mad at each other, and you know, that don't last long. It shouldn't last long. Let the sun not fall upon your ass. Anger. What's so hard about telling your wife you love her? Well, I did. You know, when we said the vow, something about love and all. No, 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 no. One of the reasons she may not be happy is because she doesn't know that you love or care. Meanwhile, she's doing all kinds of things for you. I mean, look at that, that, that section that you can't see your shoes and realize that she's helped you got that midsection. She must be feeding you good. I don't see you going to work naked. You know? And she should never have to be told. And she should be thanked. She should be praised. You know, when you step out of the car, and you're going to pump it with gas, and you bump into your wife, because she's cleaning the windows, 
You didn't ask her? You tell her you love her. And you say you're sorry for knocking her down for not seeing her. There's something she... No, no, she didn't have to do that. You know, she can do what you, what you do with your clothes. Wash them, dry them, and just throw them on the floor in your room. She folds them. You think she enjoys that? You think she enjoys chasing your clothes around the house? I'm guilty of that. I'll be the first to say that. My wife knows the path I walk in the house because there's the path of my clothes. You can tell your lover for doing that? So her children rise up and call her blessed. The first thing they do in the morning is say, thank you, Mom. Then her husband also at the, at the breakfast table. And he prayed, ah, these are great. Many daughters, other fathers, girls, have done virtuously. So there are other virtuous women out there. Now this verse does not apply to the Mormons. But thou, your wife, Excelleth them all. Now, how does what does that verse mean? Well, if you're, if you're a Mormon, you can close your eyes for a minute and your ears. How many women have you stood before a preacher and say, "I do"? I'm not counting deaf. I'm not counting it. You know, somebody committed adultery. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm saying. You said I do under the laws of the state and the Bible that says one wife and of all the women you told her that she was the excellence of all the women you ever seen been with known. And you can't remember her birthday. You can't remember your anniversary. Now, I can't remember birthdays, anniversaries, stuff like that. Like most of my family, their birthdays are in July. So July 1st, I'll send the cards out, which I don't do any. I'm just saying. If she is the best woman that you ever chosen, of all the women, why don't you tell her so? Why not surprise her with that? You don't have to buy her chocolate. You don't have to buy her roll. I mean, maybe there's one particular candy bar or one particular sweet or something. Listen, if she loves raisin bread toast, what would be wrong to stop at the store and get a loaf of raisin? If that's what she loves. Don't come home with a rod and reel and say, honey, look, I bought you. I don't want that. Can I have it? I'm going to use it this weekend. You're the one that chose that woman above all women. Well, I hadn't. You should have kept it closed. Somebody should have talked with you about the series of marriage. Do something special. If she won't let you in the kitchen to cook, is. Uh, do a grill, do something out in the grill. Take her out. Take her to that place that is special that you have to say, honey, you guys speak loud, they can't hear you in the loudspeaker. What do you want again?
You know, a coffee and a donut can go far when it's love. When she knows she's loved by you, and you're loved by her, it's the littlest things. She's not a slave. And she may not be able to do all these things. She may not be able to sell things. Let her find what she can do and let her do it. Now we're not done. Because now we're going to look at the eyes of God. Now isn't that important? Peter says something about in 1 Peter chapter 2, I believe. Why is it to be a subjection to her? We go on that avenue, but we're not going. We're talking about the wife and the husband here. You know, Peter says that there, there's a thing where your prayers could be hindered. Talking to you men about your wife being a weaker vessel. Oh, she always cries. And, oh, good, the Bible told you she's the weaker vessel. Man, she's got more pains and sorrows than you do. You know, things that a woman goes through through the women's course of life, and you get a little boo-boo on your thumb, and you act like a six-year-old, and then she takes care of you with patience. You, when she gets in her thing, you throw a box of chocolate and shut the door. That's not right. You know, Paul says about the marriage, he says, in the Corinthians, he says, there's a point, you know what? You should abstain from that lust of each other for fasting, but don't do it too long because Satan will come in. Don't be afraid to tell your wife, I, I'm at work, I'm having to pray. Matter of fact, she should be the first one you tell her should be praying. And don't be afraid to go up to the church, your pastor, somebody in the church, say, listen, my wife's in a lot of pain right now. So, Would well, you pray for her? Favor is deceitful. That's a good and interesting word. Why don't you? A lot of people get favored by deceit. Politicians and used car salesmen. Beauty is vain. Get in an automobile accident, have your face hit the windshield about 75 miles per hour, see how well beauty will be. You know, you, you get uh, certain uh, surgeries, you know, made in China, uh, uplift yourself. For what? All you did is waste money. It's vain. Imagine if archaeologists would dig up our, our generation and generation to follow in the cemeteries one day and find all the artificial parts. The heck was that, a robot or a human? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. It better be by her husband. I would be that I would hate to be the the husband of this woman who's never taken care of her, never given her prayer. Can you, can you imagine that she's standing there at the judgment seat of Christ and she's lived a pitiful life, and her husband, you know, they're saved because this is to save people. I'm not talking to the lost people. Can you imagine Jesus Christ gets off the throne and says, Heaven and angels! This is Miss Such and Such. This is her testimony. There's a loss of her husband. Never gave her credit. Well, everybody in all the church of God and all the angels having this, please, let's give her a round of applause. Her husband wouldn't do it. She shall be praised. If her husband doesn't do it, then the Bible's wrong, right? Where you got the husband goes up to judgment seat of Christ and 
you know, you two battling it out. You're a husband and wife. Paul says, listen, marriage is trouble. It's fighting. Let's see. Uh, open up the book. Angels, did they ever make any vows in their life? Oh, yeah, Lord. He said in, in, in Korea, Lord, if you get me out of here, I'll go to church every uh, Has he fulfilled that one? No. All right, that one. What are the vows that they made? Well, such and such day and such and such preacher, they said they will they will stay together to death do his part. Was that vow fulfilled? Yes, it was. And the Bible says, did she do? Did she fear the Lord? She feared the Lord, Lord. She feared you. Feared you. Was she praised? Oh, yes, Lord. She was praised. Well done, thou good and faithful service. Enter thou in the joy of the Lord. Sister such such, come up. My husband. Did they make any vows? Yeah, they made vows. Did they fulfill uh, They made a vow? Yeah, they said to death do his part. Did they do it? Yeah, they did it. Did she fear the Lord? Yes, she feared, feared you, Lord, man. She loved you. She had a Sunday school class. She did all she could. Did her husband praise her? Did her husband praise her? I'm looking. Hold on, Lord. I don't see anything here, Lord. Can I have her Sunday school class and her church and all the angels in heaven stand up and praise her for what her husband didn't do? Imagine what the husband's going to feel like. You ever get that, that choke on this? Oh, man. That sickness in your stomach? Oh. It says she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hand. Lady, what if you didn't do nothing with your hands? Ashes. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Can we jump to 23? Her husband is known in the gates. Guess who's supposed to praise her? Guess who's supposed to say, hey, you see this? Yeah, did you get that at the Stellar and Kind store? Down? No, no, I didn't get there. Did you get that a day foot? No, I didn't get it down there. Well, where on earth did you get that? My wife made it to me. Your wife can do that? Oh, yeah. Think she can make me one? No, but I think if she maybe teaches your wife to make you. Hey. Oh, look at that. Your wife wrote on your sandwich, I love you. What's your wife write on you? Get lost? Don't come home? You got the bag. When are you coming back? You know what I mean? A wife is not a pushover. She's something in the eyes of God. And then again, she's not to be idleness. She has her responsibilities just like you do, and you're to help her in the responsibility. You're to praise her. How many men will shout amen in a church service and then silent all week when they gave their wife? Now, I'm easy. Like today, my wife asked, what kind of sandwich you want for work? I, wherever you want to make. I, whatever's simple for you. You want to go all out? I'll, I'll enjoy it. If you don't feel you don't feel well, so then make the simple as you can. I'm going to enjoy it. But I can sit there and bow my head and know my wife made this for me. I don't have to go pay five bucks for a sandwich. We close out Proverbs about a wife, and you would think Solomon would be the one that wrote about a wife with a thousand wives, but we leave off with King Lemuel. Because you know who Solomon's wives were? They're the ones that brought him away from God. 
they took him away and served their gods. Solomon tells us who not to marry. King Lamel and his mother tells us who to marry. And this is the kind of woman's going to push you. Man. I don't want to go to church today. Come on, get up. You know, when she loves you, she's got a cold bucket of water over your face. Or, I mean, she'll understand if you're sick and not feeling well. And, you know, she'll take care of you. And she knows when you're lazy and good for nothing. You need an extra little hat in the butt or something. And she's got enough patience because she's going to wake everybody else in the house and get them all going. I think she deserves a better than just I love you. I think she deserves something from the heart. I mean, what can you do? That's what the Bible says. Just wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and get her brighten up and say, Honey, I love you, and then roll over and go back to sleep. Just sleep. Little fun stuff you can do in marriage to, get, to keep it going, keep it alive, keep it well. And I'll tell you one more thing before I close. Now, if you are a soul winning Christian, and you knock on doors, you're on a street ministry, whatever it is, and if your wife is right there by your side, while you're preaching, being looking foolish to all the world, and she's there with a smile, getting tracks out, or knocking on doors, or she's taking care of the kids at home and can't, wants to be there. You better thank God for her, and you better give her some credit. Because you may have the whole world against you, but if you turn around, you got one person right there that's on your side, by your side, that's going to stand at your side at the judgment seat of Christ. It'd be terrible for, you, for her to get the rewards that you got, but you didn't deserve because you didn't treat her right. Now, your heart's not right, but her heart was right, and all the credit goes to her. So you just need to turn around. If you're going up to the next door, you're, you just got done preaching on the street, and a bunch of people cut you out. You just need to turn to that wife and, and look to her and say, you know what, I just want to thank you that you're there. Or, you know, like I said, she's taking care of the kids. Like, you just need to come home with a large pizza that she likes and say, Honey, I just want to thank you that you took care of the kids and, and let me have the opportunity to go serve the Lord. Here, here's a pizza. Here's the flowers. Here's a chia plant. Whatever you want. Whatever she likes. I got this just for you for being a loving wife of the Lord. That's what it's all about.